Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at a programming exercise and uh, this is aimed at people who are new to Julia, new to programming, new to writing functions, mathematical science students or computer science students and so on who are starting out in their journey. I'm using Julia version 1.6.1 .1, and also I am using Jupyter Notebooks. So the objective here is to write a function called the sigmoid function and you might encounter this in mathematics and machine learning and so on. But it's a simple mathematical transformation of a single value where we input a single value or multiple values and then get a corresponding output, which are also numeric, okay? So we have an input here, z, and the output is, is a function, s of z equals one over one plus e to the minus z, okay? So it's a straightforward mathematical function, okay? Just to start off, what I'm going to remark upon is how we would work with constants. Uh, mathematical constants, well-known mathematical constants such as pi, okay, uh, 3.1415 and so on. Uh, what I might do actually is just above show you Euler's constant, E, okay. Now, it actually is not defined for Julia and the reason is E is just too common. So what we would do here is just actually specify as base math constants dot e okay does that work for us yes it does okay uh, this that's actually specific to uh, jupyter notebooks by the way so if you're working with any other environments uh, there's the other ways of doing that so that is very specific to jupyter notebooks anyway so we're going to just uh, specify e as having that value okay and let's see if we can carry out some calculations on it e to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, that's fine. Now, I'm just going to uh, see how we would get the exponential of the values 1 and 2 when they are stored as a vector there. So, it, same sort of thing, thing here, but just actually as a remark, we're doing element-wise calculations. So, just before the operator uh, and so on, we put a little dot there, dot, chevron, brackets, and specify the vector there. Okay, does that work? Yes, it does. And also, now, that's just actually remarking on how Euler's constant there and how to work with it. But uh, we also have the exponential function here. Okay. And that does the same job. I just wanted to show you where we would get Euler's constant if we need it. Okay. So, I'm going to set up a, a function here. A function... Uh, specify the uh, the command function the name of the function here we're going to call it sigmoid and then default arguments there uh, z equals zero and essentially this is a mathematical expression of the uh, formula that we just looked at above and then just there at the end end okay so that's a very straightforward way of writing a function a mathematical function in julia okay and remember the element-wise calculation there, dot. It will work for uh, zero. Let's run that. Okay. There we have it set up. And there it works for just an, a single value, zero. Uh, let's just check if it works for this vector here. We'll set up a vector A here. I put I changed 3 to 3.1 just to make it a float. Doesn't really matter. Okay, that's our vector a okay and let's put that in sigmoid dot a now essentially that is the job done we have what we need okay if i was to put in zero there gives us 0 0.5 let's go back to a just remember what happens if you don't put in that dot there yeah we got that problem there so remember to put in the dot here also okay if you're working with a vector okay now i'm just going to step back a bit and look at the building blocks here a little bit more okay so we have the exponential of the elements of a or minus the elements of a okay and again the little dot now this is important here uh one we add, we want to add one to each element but what we do here is it's a scalar plus a vector so element wise calculations dot plus okay there we go 
And then we want to get the inverse of those. So it's another element-wise calculation. Uh, dot chevron minus one. So this is how we get the inverted, essentially. Okay. That's it. So that's the denominator of the expression, and that's just inverting it. So such that it is the denominator. So I'm going to call that sigmoid two. Not that it matters that much. It just sort of it has a slightly different construction. Just to check that it works the same way. So sigmoid two of one point zero. There we go. Let's put in a again. Looks good. Uh, let's try it ranges here. So b equals or it's a range from one up to a possible value of five in step sizes of 0 0.75 okay basically it's just a range that's all i want uh, add in the sigma uh, create the sigmoid of that that range sigmoid dot b perfect okay so it works for li linear ranges as well and so on just to show that so here we have a tuple uh, tuple is c and that is equal to minus 1.25 and 1.5 and Likewise, let's just run that. There we go. The output comes out as a tuple. That's it. Okay.